Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's your homeboy, LeSean Anderson, and I'm back with another video. This is Instagram is Ruining Your Life by Charisma on Command. And, uh, yeah, man, I ain't been on Instagram in the longest time. I might just go on there just to like people's pictures and then, <laughs> and then I, I get off. Um, that's about it, you know. Um, I really don't find Instagram really to be that bad, um, personally, but, uh, I understand why people can feel a certain type of way about Instagram, but, uh, that's personally just me. What I personally think is, like, horrible is Twitter. Twitter is hot garbage. I had Twitter for about, like, a good maybe six months and i said let me delete this man this gotta go but uh yeah man let's get into this video um and before we start this video how about you uh like this video and subscribe to my channel you know what i'm saying just i would appreciate that man you know it, it would do me a lot right now so like and subscribe all right Thank you. All right, so let's get it started. If you were an alien looking at the Instagram newsfeed, you would have to conclude that most humans spend their lives in leisure, traveling and smiling all day long. You'd assume that there were far more honeymoons than fights, far more moments of laughing so hard that you cry than actual crying, and far more hey, successes that one than failures. The but none of that is true. Our lives are not represented by the photos that we share. We are pretending, and it comes at a dire cost. There's been a lot said about the danger of consuming social media. After all, the sites are designed to be more addictive than crack. The articles do little more than waste your time, and the misrepresentation of how people live can lead to depression with the state of your own life. But those are the easy criticisms. The real danger of Instagram and other social media sites is not in what we consume, but in what we create. Think of it this way. Every time you post a photo, you are contributing to the creation of a persona, kind of like in a video game. You post a photo in front of the Eiffel Tower, and your sophistication stat goes up. You delete a photo where you look bad, and your beauty stat goes up. Or you share a funny meme, and your humor stat goes up. You choose these photos specifically because you want those stats to go up. You want that persona to be seen in a certain way. Everything that you leave out is also on purpose, they whether the it's embarrassing, boring, or not who you want that persona to be. And all this is fine. Nothing is wrong with creating a persona. The problem arises when you get attached to that persona. When you look at your Instagram photos or your Facebook profile and you say that is me at that point the persona the mask that you have decided to show people becomes your identity you protect it every selfie needs to be pretty enough and every caption needs to be funny enough with every single post you are saying this is who I am judge me and that is when you doom yourself because that constructed identity isn't who you are Sure, you're in that photo, but that's not you might be you reaching, all the time. Buddy. And sure, you did write that caption, but you're probably not that clever all the time. Those moments are fragments of your life, carefully selected to make you appear a certain way. They aren't the whole you. Okay. And so even though you crave the validation from the likes and the comments, they don't really make you happy. In fact, the more that you care about those likes, the more that I can guarantee you will be unhappy. Why? Well, first off, it takes a lot of energy to create and manage an identity. Think of all the photos that you've ever taken and deleted, the time you spent filtering, editing, plus the work you put into getting dressed up, knowing that you'll be seen later on Instagram. Think of the time spent crafting witty tweets and captions. You are trying to control how strangers perceive your reality when you do this, and it is incredibly taxing. Second, you sacrifice your own experience to promote your identity. Last year, a girl I knew backpacked to Asia, and after the first week, she was homesick and physically sick. She felt lonely and hated it, but she continued for weeks more because she was afraid of what people would think if she left. She was afraid that they would think she was a failure. 
The whole time, she posted smiling pictures on pristine beaches while people commented how lucky she was, which only made her feel more stuck. We don't do the things we want to do because we care more about what other people think of us than what we think of ourselves. Third, you outsource your happiness to the masses. Have you ever been bummed that you didn't get enough likes on a photo? If so, you are literally outsourcing your happiness to a mob. That kind of dependence on the reactions of others, especially strangers, is a classic road to misery. You can spend your whole life trying to please yeah, a group love of yourself, people that you man. barely even know. That's Fourth, fast. curating an identity stops you from investing in you. Getting physically fit right, takes worry about months yourself. of work and discipline. Choosing a flattering angle, adding a filter, and taking a photo at the gym takes about 30 seconds. So it's no wonder that many people choose to work more on their persona than on themselves. It's always easier to change the persona. But when you focus on that, you don't get the benefit of actually being fit or of actually being happy. Your persona levels up while you stagnate. Fifth, and lastly, curating an identity limits you. You've probably learned that you need to be a certain way on social media. For most people, that's smiley and happy. For others, that's whiny and outraged. Either way, you lock yourself into a fixed identity that dictates not only what you share, but how you act. You forget that you always have a choice on how you want to behave. Now, let me make this clear. This isn't just limited to Instagram. This happens on Facebook, on Snapchat, Reddit, Twitter, Pinterest, and yes, for those of us posting videos, it's the same on YouTube. It happens offline as well in the way that we tell stories to build ourselves up, in the clothes, in the cars we buy to brand ourselves. We create a persona and then sacrifice our lives in order to promote it. So yes, I mean it when I say that Instagram might be ruining your life. The effort that you put into appearing a certain way wastes your time, influences your behavior, and makes you unhappy. And given the way the technology is going, there's nothing you can do about it. The end. Just kidding. <laughs> there are yeah, plenty okay. of things that you can do to break this cycle. And while quitting social media is an obvious and effective answer, it just doesn't solve the whole problem. We still have to break free of the do. desire oh, okay. to be seen and judged in a certain light. We need to learn to let our actions speak for themselves. Plus, Instagram and social media isn't all bad. More than once, I have met someone briefly who I eventually became very close with because of social media. I wouldn't want to give up those connections. So how can you remove all that bad that we talked about while still retaining the good? First, start by limiting your consumption. And the easiest way that you can do that is Set to avoid the feed. Whether we're talking Facebook, Instagram, okay, Twitter, Snapchat, the feed is almost always designed for mindless consumption. And I can, yes, include YouTube and Reddit in that list as well, which are my sins. The homepage is just more trouble than it's worth. And I tell you this at my own expense since the YouTube homepage is where I get most of my views from. So here are some things that have worked for me. For Instagram and other apps where you follow people, Follow high volume posters that you don't care about. It just nukes your feed and trains you not to spend time there. For Facebook, the Facebook newsfeed eradicator is the easiest and best fix, which I will link to I'll in the still description. Use Facebook. You can also delete these apps on your phone, except that you're only going to log in from a computer, which is oftentimes far more cumbersome, and therefore you will do it less often. Then, bookmark specific subreddits, YouTube channel, Pinterest boards, whatever, to avoid entering those sites through the homepage. And all I got very is Instagram and YouTube. Because I still cheat all of this. Get Stay Focused or some similar app to block certain sites or at least limit your time. Second, yeah, coming back to the identity portion, for one month, stop posting. Stop telling stories that bolster your persona. No more recounting the super cool party that you went to or how you volunteered or how hard CrossFit was. Instead, pay attention to what you enjoy doing when you have no reason for doing it other than for the experience itself. Do you still enjoy the club when you don't get a geotagged photo? Do you still go to CrossFit when no one immediately knows you went? This exercise actually showed me that I like vacations far less than I thought. So I stopped taking them and I felt happier. Plus, I saved a bunch of money. Third, go do something really cool, like skydiving or surfing, or maybe something that you should do, like volunteering or donating blood, something that reflects really well on you. And don't take a picture. Don't post a status. Don't even tell anyone. This is great practice in caring more about you, your experience right. and doing the right if thing, rather than the social validation that comes from it. 
Now, some of you might be in a position where you have non-identity boosting reasons to be involved with social media, and I count myself in that group. I believe that these videos have a positive impact on others, and I know that they have a positive impact on my finances. So if you've got reasons to be posting other than identity creation, how can you participate in the healthiest way? First off, don't lie to yourself. I know a lot of starting entrepreneurs who think that Facebook and Instagram are important to their business, yet their customers come from other channels, or business people who think that they should have a social media presence, yet do nothing to monetize it. If that's the case, those likes are not driving your business. They are driving the social media really so isn't that important Get to a out business. Now, the dopamine withdrawal will be you hard, but it's the only the way to save your real life. The business and work. if you legitimately are a professional creator, you need to separate the audience reaction from your identity. You see this number? That's how many subscribers we have today on YouTube. And I thought that when this number was 100,000, I would be over the moon. Part of me thought that if we could just hit 100,000 subscribers, I would be emotionally set for life. We hit it, we got our silver play button, and I swear, my next thought was, man, when we get a million subscribers, that'll really make me happy. I hope you get the point. That that number in your head, that when you get it, it'll be enough, that number will never make you happy. Whether that number is likes, subscribers, or even dollars, it is just an indicator of how many people have clicked a button. That's and true. yes, it can be connected to income, and yes, it is connected to the amount of lives that you're impacting, but that number is just a business metric. It's not a I'm measure of it. your worth. Similarly, the comments aren't about you. They are sometimes about the work you've done and oftentimes about the person commenting. So take them for feedback and then go back to creating things that move people without wondering what it says about you. I hope that this video helps you break the cycle of identity creation and preservation. Live your life first. Do the things that you want to do first. And if you want to take pictures of those things, go ahead. Just remember, your character emerges from what you do, not from what you broadcast. If you like Yeah, man, that's true. Like, I, you know, um... I, I agree 100%, man. Just limit yourself. Like, I remember I seen something. It was talking about, you know, do like 30 days off Instagram and do this and, and that and, and whatnot. And I remember I, I did 30 days off without posting and, and, and whatnot. And let me tell you something, man. I got Instagram, but I, I rarely post, you know. <laughs> like, I, I guess, I guess I'm... I guess I'm a ghost follower. I, I don't know. But, um, but, uh, I don't know what a ghost follower means. I really don't. I just, I just like that word. But, uh, yeah, man, like, I, I just will like people's stuff every now and then. But, um, yeah, the one thing when he was talking about don't take pictures, like, I really, I'm really, um, a don't take person type person. <coughs> Bless me. And, um, yeah, man, like, I remember, um, when the Cavaliers won the championship, you know, they beat, they did the, the, the unthinkable and had the greatest comeback since Lazarus, you know what I'm saying? And, um, I remember actually going to the parade and, and just like living in that moment and, you know, doing all this stuff and, and I remember like just living it into that moment of excitement and just calling my mom and calling my sister up and like, oh like I'm here at the parade, da, 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 da. we we turn, we oh my god, man. And then didn't even think about taking a picture until like the last minute when everybody started walking off the stage <laughs> of the the end of the parade ceremony. And then they started like talking to everybody and uh LeBron was cussing up a storm like I st and that's the thing it, like about living in the moment like sometimes like reliving you know that whole situation and and the whole build up of and the excitement of actually just being in that moment and just engulfing that moment and just submerging in your memories you know is better than actually taking a picture where you just you just look at a picture and it's just you and this that and the third in the square and all you really do is just talk about that picture you're not really talking about everything the whole detail the whole 
you know, ex extravaganza. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the whole, the whole Zatarans. I know Zatarans is rice, but I feel like that word should really mean something extravagant. You know what I'm saying? Or it might, it might really do mean something. I, you know, I'm not an English major. I don't know. But uh, yeah, man, like the whole, you know, thing is is the whole memory is more enjoyable than just that picture to me that's why i'm not really much of a picture taker you know like i love you know keeping that memory intact and just you know talking about the whole situation like sometimes that memory just makes everything great and I always hate when people say, hey, if you don't got no picture or no video, then it didn't happen. It's like, hey, all right, then. Well, I don't got to tell you then, because if you want to be ignorant, <laughs> all right, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, man, you know, that's just that's just me. Um, so I, I understand where he's coming from with, with Twitter and Instagram. But also, if, if you are, like, secure with who you are as a person, then I feel like social media um, isn't um, a really uh, a boogeyman. You know what I'm saying? Um, Instagram, um, Snapchat, Twitter, shoot, YouTube isn't all that bad. I'm just on YouTube, you know, just to watch some videos and, and uh, you know, laugh and have a good time. You know? Anyway, that's my time. Like, comment, and subscribe, and... Deuce, deuce. We up out of here. All right. I'm out.